construction of the Metro Manila subway, the Philippines' first underground railway, continues to make significant progress, with major developments in tunnel boring and station works now visible. The project involves the construction of a 33-kilometer railway line that will connect Valenzuela City to Pasay City, with a spur line to Ninoy Aquino International Airport, Terminal 3. Last month, the Department of Transportation, DOTR, launched the third Metro Manila subway project's tunnel boring machine, or TBM, at Camp Aguinaldo Station in Quezon City. These tunnel boring machine can drill from 7 to 12 meters and is expected to reach the Anonas station after six months. Meanwhile, after two months, its parallel tunnel boring machine will also be operational, likewise heading to Anonas station. The two previous tunnel boring machines have already excavated more than 1,000 meters at Camp Aguinaldo station, heading to Ortiga station. The fourth TBM for Camp Aguinaldo Station is already being assembled, while the whole Metro Manila subway project is now being tunneled by eight machines through multiple segments to the north of its alignment, particularly in Valenzuela, Quezon City, and Pasig. The Department of Transportation, DOTR, targets to finish the Metro Manila subway project by 2032 with a five-year delay due to unforeseen events. Right-of-way issues have been cited as the main cause of delays for the flagship subway project, which is expected to benefit millions of commuters in the nation's capital. The Metro Manila subway project have 17 stations, situated in Valenzuela, where the depot will be located, Quirino Highway, Tandang Sora, North Avenue, Quezon Avenue, East Avenue, Anonas, Katipunan in Camp Aguinaldo, Ortigas Avenue, Shaw Boulevard, Calayan Avenue, Bonifacio Global City, Lawton East, Senate Deped, NAIA Terminal 3, FTI, and Bikutan. The MMSP is envisioned to be interconnected with other rail systems. The Light Rail Transit, or LRT, Line 1, the Metro Rail Transit Line 3, and the Metro Rail Transit Line 7 through the Common Station. The Light Rail Transit Line 2 at the Anonas Station, and a physical run through into the North-South Commuter Railway Extension at the FTI and Bikutan stations. The project currently has an estimated total cost of 488.5 billion pesos, of which 370.7 billion pesos will be financed through an Official Development Assistance ODA, loan from the Japan International Cooperation Agency JICA. Meanwhile, 117.7 billion pesos will be covered by the Philippine government. The Philippine government and JICA have so far signed three tranches of loan agreements. The first tranche, amounting to 104.53 billion yen, or 47.58 billion pesos, was signed in March 2018. The second tranche, amounting to 253.31 billion yen, or 112.87 billion pesos, was inked in February 2022. And the third, 150 billion yen, or 55.37 billion pesos loan deal for the project, was signed in March 2024. The previous DOTR leadership earlier projected that the MMSP will be partially operational by 2028 and will be fully operational a year after, but Dizon said full completion of the project was stretched further to 2032. The Philippines Department of Transportation assured the public that it was on track to completing the Metro Manila subway projects funded by the Government of Japan who has long supported the Philippines' ambitious rail expansion initiative, particularly in Mega Manila. 
Civil works are ongoing for the 36-kilometer Metro Manila subway project. A third of the multi-billion peso Metro Manila subway project has been completed, with much of the accomplishment coming from the design and procurement of equipment. While the design and procurement is almost complete, actual construction of the subway is estimated at less than 40% as of October 2025. The project will be implemented in two phases in multiple contract packages. The MMSP contract package, CP101, includes the construction of the first 7.3-kilometer section of the project from the depot in Valenzuela to the north of Metro Manila, including the depot, three stations, and six shield tunnels, which connect the stations. Tunnel excavation commenced in January 2023. The tunneling work involves the construction of six underground tunnels with a total length of 9.5 kilometers with an inner diameter of 6.1 meters. The project will use up to six Earth Pressure Balance Tunnel Boring Machines, TBMs. CP-102 encompasses the construction of two stations, Kazon and East Avenues, for the MMSP. Construction of these stations commenced in April 2023. CP-102 will connect commuters to Kazon City's Central Business District, government offices, and private institutions. CP-103 of the MMSSP includes constructing the Camp Aguinaldo station, which will connect the Anonas to other stations and to Naya terminals. The pre-construction works for the station commenced in November 2021. CP-104 includes the construction of two subway stations and tunnels at Ortigas North and South. In comparison, CP-105 involves tunnel works and the construction of two stations, the Calayan in Makati City and Bonifacio Global City Terminals in Taguig City. CP-106 involves electrical and mechanical systems and track works. CP-107 includes designing, supplying, installing, constructing, testing, and commissioning of 240 train cars or 38 car train sets for MMSP. CP-108 includes the construction of the Lawton to Senate tranche, and CP-109 includes the spur line linking to the Naya Terminal 3 station. The Metro Manila subway project is the most ambitious project under previous Duterte's administration, carried over by Marcos Jr., as it was dubbed as the Philippines' Project of the Century. Dubbed as the crown jewel of the Philippine mass transportation system, the Metro Manila subway project construction is well underway. The tunneling works for the project crossed its point of no return this past January, and with it, the digging has been non-stop since. The subway project will cost the Philippines government up to 488.5 billion pesos, or around $10 billion. The Japan International Cooperation Agency is set to fund 76% of the project via a 370.8 billion pesos loan package. The remaining 24% of the project cost, amounting to 117.7 billion pesos, will be paid for by the Philippine government. This is one of the most expensive rail projects in Southeast Asia. After Singapore's Cross Island Line, Malaysia's East Coast Rail Link, and the other Philippines rail project, North-South Commuter Railway, the Metro Manila subway is way more expensive compared to China's BRI project of Indonesia, the Jakarta to Bandong high-speed rail. This will be one of the few fully underground rail lines in Southeast Asia. The other lines are in Singapore. Metro Manila Subway will use the One Sistina product brand name for the next generation stainless steel train cars, featuring higher energy conservation, enhanced safety, and high maintainability. This brand has been adopted by multiple railway lines, including the Yamanote line operated by East Japan Railway Company. 
The entire line will use 240 train cars, or eight cars for 30 train sets, and will be manufactured and supplied by JTREK and Sumitomo Corporation, the leading train car manufacturer in Japan. Japan's assistance, through a variety of ODA support, will provide the Philippines government funds to build this quality infrastructure utilizing Japan's 27,000-kilometer railway experience and broad knowledge gained through the years. Along with the MMSP, the Philippine Railway Institute will also be created. This will be a totally new means of public transport and infrastructure. Seeing as it will be the first in the Philippines, part of the project is the creation of the Philippine Railway Institute. The Institute will serve as the planning, implementing, and regulating agency for human resources development, and as a research and training center, not just for the Metro Manila subway project, but eventually for the entire railway sector of the country. This is how a tunnel boring machine works. One of the most popular construction methods used by tunnel boring machines, or TBM, is EPB, Earth Pressure Balance, Underground. TBM is constantly subject to stanic earth pressure and water pressure. To even outbalance them, the trust jack cylinder applied forward pressure. The earth pressure balances are managed with an earth pressure gauge. The ground is excavated by the cutter head and broken up. Additive injected is softened and adjusted so it can be more easily convey pressure to the earth pressure gauge. Pressure bounce is maintained while excavating and soil is evacuated using the screw conveyor. TBMs there by bounces static earth and water pressure to smoothly and stably performed excavation. TBMs, such as EPB machine, are composed of a shield body that performed tunnel excavation and a backup system which carry the equipment necessary for the excavation. The cutter head rotates, excavating the soil in front of the TBM. The cutter head is equipped with this cutter and scraper bit. This can be replaced when it became worn out. The bearing is rotated by the cutter motors, turning the cutter head at the front of the TBM. Thrust jack cylinders are extended to push some form segments, and the counter forces push the TBMs forwards. The TBM is equipped with an articulation jack system for negotiating sharp curves. The cutter's head is composed of a front and rear shield, and articulation enables them to excavate these curves. The erector holds each segment to reach strokes assembling these segments in ranges. The erector places each segment in place individually and then places the key segment, completing the ring. The TBM uses a symmetric straggler joint construction. The embedded pumps in the back of cars pump A liquid and B liquid to the grouting units mounted in the machine. Two grouting units for grouts between segments and the skid plates, while the TBM performs excavation. These prevent subsidence and water leakage from between segments, and as well as rapidly stabilize the segments. The additive pumps in the back of the car pump foams and polymer to the cutter head. The additive is injected by the cutter head while machine excavation is in progress, solidifying the mud. The screw conveyor excavated soil to the rear of the TBM. 
the soil is passed through a rubber hose to the backup of the conveyor and tunnel conveyor to the final conveyor, in that order, and carry to the rear of the tunnel. The use of tunnel conveyors is far more efficient than excavations by Mack cars. The rolling stocks supply new segments. The strolling stock is made of locomotives, two segment cars, and a platform. A crane picks up individual segment brought in from the backup and load them one by one to the erector. EPB machines improve excavation efficiency and contribute to urban development.